Good morning, dear children. Hello, everyone. It's been a long time since I've seen you, and I've come this morning to tell you a story. The story is called The Bear Who Stole the Chinook. It's a Native American story from the Siksika tribe out in the Great Plains. And it's a story about the spring that did not want to come. Now you're probably wondering, what is a Chinook? The Chinook is the warm spring wind that blows up from the south. It melts the snow, it melts the ice, it makes the birds come back and fly and twitter. The animals come, the plants grow, and all turns green and flowery. But without the Chinook, everything stays cold and frozen. And you see, it was one such winter when the spring did not come. The ground was frozen, everything was snowy and icy, it was freezing cold, <laughs> and even people were getting snick, sick and sneezing. <laughs> achoo! 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 And everybody called out, where is the Chinook? And you can all help me. You can call out, where is the Chinook? And if you can't say it, you can clap it or stamp it. Where is the Chinook? Here we go. Where is the Chinook? They didn't know. Nobody knew where the Chinook was. And there was a Native American boy. He'd grown up quite alone without a mother and father, and he was very good friends with the animals and the birds. So he called them to come and help him find the Chinook. Now let me introduce you to his animal friend. Look, over here. Do you see this black bird with so much white in his feathers? <laughs> He's called the magpie. He's related to our blackbird and blue jays out here in the east but he flies across the Great Plains, getting into everybody's business. He knows everything that's going around. And if he doesn't know, he goes to his relatives. Ah, he has so many relatives, aunts and uncles, nieces and nephews and cousins. And if they're not his relations, they're his friends. He knows everyone and is in everybody's business. We'll see how he helps us find the Chinook. Now, we have wise old Owl. Owl is called the wise one because he has keen eyesight. See how big his eyes are. He can see even in the darkest of night, he can see. An owl is a one to have on your side if you're looking for the Chinook. And notice the owl has black rings around his eyes. <laughs> At the beginning of our story, he didn't have such rings. And we'll find out how the owl got his black rings. Now, let me introduce you to Coyote. Coyote's a little bit like a fox, and he's a little bit like a wolf, but he really is his own thing. Uh, even here in Pennsylvania, we do have coyotes, but you don't see them too often. They stay in the forests and in the mountains, but any farmer knows, just like the fox, the coyote will come and steal your chickens, steal your ducks. He'll even steal the lambs out in the field. <laughs> the coyote is a great thief, a great robber. And if you're looking for something that's hard to find, <laughs> the coyote is a good one to have on 
your team. Now, this one is the weasel. And you know, he turns white in the winter. And when he stands on the snow, he's almost invisible. You can only see his beady eyes and the shadows in his ears and around his mouth. <laughs> and so I had to color the picture with many, many colors so you would have the ability to see the weasel. <laughs> Otherwise, weasel would have been invisible to you. And weasel is so slim, so slender and long, and he can squeeze into almost any place where us fatter people would never fit. And lastly, we have prairie chicken. They're about the size of our turkeys out here in the east. A big bird that roams the prairies and the foothills and mountains in the Midwest and West. And do you see his beak? Do you see his mouth? Oh, it's very sharp. It's like a razor. It can cut open anything. And if you're looking for something that's well hidden, well, it's a good to have the prairie chicken on your side. So the boy met with his animal friends, and they all agreed with him to go on a journey to find the Chinook. So first, Magpie said, I will fly out into the foothills and the mountains, and I will inquire from all my friends and relations, my aunts and uncles, nieces and nephews and cousins, and all my friends that are up there in the hills. So off he went. He asked everyone, Who stole the Chinook? Where is the Chinook? And do you know, when he asked the question, he then came back to his friends with an answer. What question did he ask? The same one you practice at the beginning of the story. <laughs> Who stole the Chinook? And he came back with the answer. So, now that we know where the Chinook is, we have to go out to find him. We have to pack for a journey. Do you ever go on a hike? Well, you need something to eat, something to drink, and something to protect you against the weather. Now imagine that it's cold, cold winter with deep snows and deep ice and hard, cold winds. Well, you're going to need to take food, berries, and dried meat 
for yourself and all your animal friends. And you're going to have to take a warm blanket. And the boy had a wonderful buffalo skin coat that he took along to keep him and all his friends warm. And now they're going to go on a long hike over several days to find the cave where the bear is hiding with the Chinook. Come, let's go on a hike. Where is the Chinook? The bear, he stole the Chinook. Where is the Chinook? Are you hiking with me? led them on the way, looking over hills and peaks and cliffs and into the rocky places. And he saw the cave where the bear was hiding. <gasps> Ooh, now it's getting serious. Who will go first to see if the bear really is in his cave? And to see if really the bear has the Chinook. While they were looking and talking with each other, they could hear heavy stamping and growling inside the cave. The bear knew that he had unwelcome visitors. Owl will go first. Wise old owl, he's calm, as we say, cool as a cucumber. He will fly up to the smoke hole where the bear lets out the smoke from his cooking fire. And he will look in to see if the bear really is there and to see if he can spot the Chinook. Let's go with Owl. Owl. Owl flies up. He flies up to the top of the bear's hiding place, up to the cave where there's a smoke hole, where the smoke will come out when the bear is cooking. And Owl looks into the cave. But uh-oh, bear hears him coming. And Bear takes a big stick and he reaches up to the top of his cave. Whoa! And then he goes, whoa! And he hits the owl in both of his eyes. Oh. Boys and girls, did you ever get hit in the eye? Your eye gets quite black and blue and a dark ring forms around it that stays with you for many days, even weeks. And the blow of the bear on the owl's eyes stayed with him for all these days, even into our time. Now remember, if I ask you, who stole the Chinook? You're going to answer me. The bear, he stole the Chinook. Who stole the Chinook? The bear, he stole the Chinook. So we must still find it. Come, who shall we ask to help us this time? Oh, Coyote. Do you remember? I told you that Coyote is a robber. He's a thief. He can steal anything right in front of your eyes. The farmers have to take care of their chickens and ducks and geese and turkeys and have to take care of their sheep and their piglets as well. 
So Coyote says, I will creep into the bear's cave, and I will look around, and I will grab the Chinook when I slip in when <laughs> oh my goodness even coyote is frightened when the huge enormous bear growls at him <gasps> oh coyote could not steal into the bear's cave coyote could not find the chinook Oh, what shall we do now? Now it's Weasel's turn. Weasel, that's also slippery, slender creature who's invisible against the snow. And remember that it's winter, and snow and ice and whiteness are everywhere. So now Weasel artfully climbs up to the top of the cave where the smoke hole is open and he can look down in. Now although the bear hairs a little scratching on the walls and roof of his cave, when he looks up, he only sees white. He thinks it's a snow cloud passing over, or maybe even the snow is falling into his smoke hole. So our friend Weasel, with his sharp, beady eyes, looks down into the cave. And then he sees it. Wait a minute. He sees a fat sack, and the sack is breathing and puffing like the wind itself. The Chinook is captured in the sack, and the sack is tied tightly shut. And there it is, in the far corner of the bear's cave, the Chinook which wants to get out to bring us the warm wind of spring. So remember, I asked you at the beginning of the story, So the boy also now climbed up the sides of the stony cave, came up to the top where the opening was, and he filled his pipe with tobacco. And he blew and sucked on his pipe, making great clouds of smoke. 
and he blew the smoke down into the bear's cave. He puffed and he sucked and he blew and he sent so much smoke into the bear's cave. And if you've ever been around a smoky campfire and you breathe in the smoky air, it can make you quite drowsy. It can make you sleepy. It can make your eyes heavy and your body limp and you could just go to sleep and dream. And so indeed, the boy managed to send so much smoke into the bear's cave that the bear fell fast. Now Coyote has one more turn, our robber friend, who can steal anything out from under your eyes, <laughs> except from a wakeful bear. He will now slip into the bear's cave. And because Weasel has spotted it, he knows that the Chinook is over in the far corner of the bear's cave. So he goes in and grabs the sack. And he's out again before the bear can notice, for the bear is sound asleep. But uh oh, this living, breathing, moving, warm and cozy sack is tied shut with a very strong wrong knot, and none of the animals, or even the boy, have the strength in their fingers to open it. <gasps> oh, are we going to open the sack and let the warm Chinook out to bring the spring? Wait, <gasps> do you remember? There's one more animal friend. It's the prairie chicken. Remember his sharp beak? Just like a razor. The sharpest knife you could ever want. Oh, have you ever cut yourself on a knife? Oh no, it's not a very pleasant thing. And now the prairie chicken starts to peck on the string of the sack and with his wonderful, sharp, and razor-like beak, he opens the sack, he opens it all the way, and the Chinook, the Chinook flies out. Whoa, whoosh, with a great big whoosh, and a wheeze, and a whoa, whoa. Like a strong wind, he blows and blows and blows and blows, and already the snow and the ice are starting to melt. Oh, and with all this noise and commotion, the noise of the strong, warm Chinook wind blowing, the bear wakes up. And he comes out of his cave. And now he's going to chase after the boy and all his animal friends because he's Angry. The boy and the magpie and the owl and the coyote and the weasel and the prairie chicken, they run for it down the mountain. The snow is starting to melt. The ice on the river is cracking. But they can just get across when the ice cracks and flows away, and there's no chance, no danger, that the bear can follow them. And they come all the way down the mountain, and they come back to the village, 
and they tell everybody the good news. Who stole the Chinook? The bear, he stole the Chinook. And the Chinook now is free, and everyone could see it. The snow and ice were gone. The crocuses and daffodils, oh, well, that's what we have here. The snowdrops, they were all coming out. The fruit trees were blooming. The grass was turning green. And the time of plenty had begun again. And ever since that day, the bear has never been allowed to steal the Chinook. He has to crawl in his cave having eaten lots of nuts and berries all fall, and go into a deep sleep to get through the winter, so that you, my boys and girls, can experience the beauty of the spring like it's coming right now. And so I hope in these days, when our school is closed, that you'll have a chance to go out somewhere on a walk, to the garden, to the park, to the meadow, and experience the beautiful spring, because the boy and his animal friends have found the Chinook and set it free that spring can come again. So that's the story I wanted to tell you today. I say goodbye until next time. Next week, we'll hear the story another time. Bye-bye now. See you next week.